this episode of Bitcoin Basics, I want to talk to you about why the blockchain needs blocks. It's so funny to me how this question is seemingly so obvious, but I don't believe I've ever asked it, right? And when this was actually explained to me, it revealed so much to, about how the blockchain works. So I hope this visualization and this video can get you a little bit further along in understanding why the Bitcoin blockchain operates the way it does. Okay, let's get into it. Visualizing the blockchain is straightforward. You put some transactions in a block, then you connect the blocks to make a chain. But why are transactions stored in blocks, right? I mean, really, couldn't you just have a, a ledger of transactions listed one by one by one by one? Why do they have to be grouped together in blocks? This is the question we're asking. We know that ledgers need to put transactions in some order so that if, I, if I'm going to pay you and then you're going to pay someone else, we need to know when I don't have those funds and now that you have them and you have the funds to be able to pay to someone else, right? So the most important thing here is what order transactions are actually occurring in. But why isn't it that transactions aren't just listed one after another after another like this? Right, so in this scenario, we have transaction one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we just have the associated timestamp right next to it. Instead, what's actually going on in the Bitcoin blockchain is all of these transactions that occur in a block, we say they occurred at the same time. Instead of being indexed transaction one, two, three, four, five, they have an index starting from zero, but they don't have a timestamp associated with that index, right? The block is the only thing that has a timestamp, not each individual transaction independently. Why is that? That's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes here. What you have to understand is that there are fundamental lim limits of every technology that we work with. For example, a very fundamental limit is the limit of how fast data can travel in the universe, which as far as we know is the speed of light. Information can't travel faster than the speed of light. And on Earth and over the internet, data tends to travel much slower than light through space, since it has to go through sometimes copper wire, sometimes fiber optic cable, sometimes that's even under the ocean. Okay, so the internet is not a homogenous place. There are different speeds. There are different, there are different speeds at which your data can travel in this internet. Bitcoin with a capital B, meaning Bitcoin the network, is really just a network of associated computers connected all over the internet. Okay, and in this Bitcoin network, we, ca we call these computers nodes. Nodes are any computer that connects to this Bitcoin network. Okay, so a Bitcoin full node, so this is a specific type of node, uh, does three things primarily. Okay, it validates transactions and blocks in the network. It propagates the transactions in the network, meaning that it passes it from node to node to node. And it keeps a record of the Bitcoin ledger, of the blockchain, of the, the order of the transactions that are occurring in the ledger. Now, what is the significance of being connected all over the globe and the limitation of the speed of light and how fast data can travel all over the internet? Well, if you've ever played a video game where you're playing in one region in the world and someone else is playing in another region of the world, I know even just the connection from here to Canada, there's latency, right? There's a delay. From here to Australia, forget about it, right? Because the, that tiny little difference, wh whether it's a five second lag or a three second lag, makes every difference in the video game. The same thing applies to this Bitcoin network. Because it takes time for data to travel from computer to computer in one part of the world to another part, nodes that are closer together will see transactions originating from their local area as having occurred before transactions that are in the opposite portion of the world. So sticking with the example of the US and Australia. Okay, so actually, is that what this shows here? I think that's even what this map shows. The network latency problem causes a ledger order problem. And this is the example that I wanna use. Okay, so in this example, Alice is making a transaction to Bob and Bob is making a transaction to Alice. Let's imagine they're on the phone and they literally push send at the exact same time. All right, so where does network order, how does network order get affected and which of their full nodes, these, all three of these people are running full nodes, how are these people actually seeing the ledger differently? From Alice's perspective, she sees her own transaction as having occurred before Bob's transaction. 
This is exactly what you'd expect, right? She's literally at the location of her full node. Her network is going to see the transaction that occurred on her network before it sees the transaction that happened on the other side of the world. Now we look at Bob. Bob, same scenario. He sees his transaction that occurred on his network before he sees the transaction that occurred on the other side of the world. Now we look at Charlie. Charlie is Bob's neighbor, right? He sees Bob's transaction before he sees Alice's transaction. This is a really big problem for a ledger that needs to be synchronized to the same state. Okay, so how does this network reconcile that issue? This, by the way, is part of the reason why people did not understand how Bitcoin could exist, because cryptogra cryptographers even believed that this problem, because of general relativity, because of latency, because of the distance and, and the relativity of space time, uh, thought that you could never actually have a functioning decentralized network because of this problem. So it was a big problem. Because of decentralization and network latency, transactions can never be processed by everyone in the network at exactly the same time. But we can lower our standards by what it means to be exactly the same time, and that's what a block is. It's a lowering of the standard of, of time. So the purpose of blocks is to get a generally agreed upon order, right, for a specific time period. Once a transaction or a group of transactions have occurred, we say, oh, all of these transactions occurred at roughly the same time, and then we're just gonna call them confirmed by putting them in a block, okay? As you may have seen from one of the earlier videos about the Bitcoin blockchain as a time chain, these blocks also function as a sort of tick in this vast decentralized clock where the Bitcoin blockchain is using blocks to keep time. Blocks order transactions on the ledger. Okay, that is the most important piece to take away from this video. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, you can check out the next video in the playlist and subscribe.